Another interesting lamp that arrived today was this one. It looks like one of the other styles from that company, uh, Ranpo, with the sort of stylish ventilation slots, but this one's interesting because it contains a light sensor, so it only comes on when it's dark, and it also contains a microphone, so it only comes on when it's dark, and you shout. Well, I say shout. It turns out that if you just speak at the volume I'm speaking at the moment, as if you're just speaking to someone, it will light, um, and it stays on for about 45 seconds, then goes off again. So that's quite neat. So let's uh, let's open it up. That was fairly straightforward. The circuit board uh, looks very, very much like the standard. It actually looks identical. Hold on a second. It looks very similar to this one. Is very similar, it is that one. And oh, this one is not going to come open. And this one, so based around the same circuit board, that's quite interesting. Um, so there's the light sensor, which makes sense to poke it out through the front where the diffuser is. Is the sucker going to be on the back or is it going to be a separate module? It's a separate module. It's got uh, a little bridge wrecked far. Could that be a... Now, I'm wondering, if, could they be using a passive infrared sensor chip with a microphone connected? Because the, the passive infrared sensor chips have the light sensor facility built in. They're designed to operate at low current and drive the loads. Uh, I'm not really sure. Well, let's take a look at it. Because technically speaking, I suppose that in a way a, a microphone, a standard electric mic would provide the differential that you'd expect from a, a pass infrared detector. Let's uh, take a look at that chip and see what it is. See if we can identify it. Oh, it's a... It's a standard CMOS chip. It's a standard 4011B, CD4011B. Now, is that, that was used to be really common. A uh, quad NAND Schmitt trigger? Not, not a Schmitt trigger, that was a 4093. That's a quad NAND gate, I'm pretty sure. Commonly used for timing. So, if they're using, um, what's this uh, little component? If they're using a bridge rectifier, this is either a triac, or it might just be shunting the bridge rectifier if it's a thyristor. Because I don't see much in the way of power supply circuitry. MCR 100-8. Oh, it's a, it's a 600 volt super sensitive thyristor. Only requires about, around about 100 microamps or so on this gate. So let's um, see how that's connected. So basically speaking, the light sensing, the threshold sensing of the light and the audio is just being done with very basic, um, it's just detecting a voltage transition in the microphone, it's not really monitoring audio as such. Um, because in a way the electric microphones almost act like an audio resistor, they, they just modulate the resistance across the two leads. Um, so I see the bridge right far. One of the connections is, now is that just bridging out part of the bridge? I would have almost thought that I'm, oh yes it is. Because the, those two connections are just linked together, but they are going into the bridge as well. Oh, that's odd. One of the ways they used to drive circuitry and I suppose they still do it. If the thyristors are so expensive, so expensive, they're so sensitive that if you get a standard rectifier, say for instance like this, so all the diodes point towards a positive in a rectifier, and that's the AC.
And if you then, you connect this in series with a load, say a lamp, and then you actually put a thyristor to bridge the rectifier out, then it, when the thyristor's turned on, it basically just it shunts that, it acts like a switch. So I wonder how, if they're actually maybe charging a capacitor up and when it's being triggered, it's basically just uh, latching on and driving this, once it's latched on, the voltage will drop, uh, unless they're actually um, using a zener to actually keep a, a, because the current through the lamp isn't going to be huge. So they could be using a zener, and I see things that look like zeners, that they could actually be deriving the power supply even when it's turned on. It's all surface mount, there's quite a few components, so it's a wee bit hard to trace out. Not as easy as a standard uh, through-hole board. But yeah, it's kind of not what I was expecting, but um, I thought I thought this was going to be one of these horrible clap-activated lights that you have to walk into a room and start really clapping your hands loud and shouting to get it to light. But um, this one is quite sensitive and uh, it's quite bright and it's got the light sensor as well. Um, that uh, is actually better than I expected. It seems quite a nice little light and uh, I thought the audio was just going to be a gimmick, this sort of sound activation. But um, yeah, that could uh, act as a sort of intruder deterrent and as a handy light uh, in a place you couldn't really get access to a switch where you could just uh, leave it on because when I measured it the power consumption at standby mode was not detectable it's a fraction of a watt and when it comes on it's only about three watts or something like that so um yeah this is quite a neat little light yeah it's all right it's quite interesting indeed